All right, guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ron, and behind me is my 2018 Subaru WRX. So Portland got hit with some really bad snowstorms. If you got a chance to check out my last vlog, I actually documented the eight plus days that we didn't have electricity. So that's all in the past now and everything is good, uh, but I wanted to get something for the car to prepare it for next season in case this happens again. Uh, this is the first time I've driven my car in deep snow and I noticed that the bottom part of it is unprotected. So I ended up buying a skid plate and I'll show you guys over here. So I ended up buying the skid plate from TBW Performance and obviously it's in stainless steel. I didn't get the black one just because it's going under the car and it will get scratched regardless. But the reason I bought a skid plate to begin with is because when I was driving my car in the snow, I noticed how much it was pushing. And actually, I mentioned in my last vlog that I lost uh, my front lip just because I hit a piece of ice. But I wanted to make sure that the bottom side is protected. That's where the turbo is and all the other important components. And as you guys can see, it's actually only protected by a piece of plastic. Basically, if you hit something sharp, it'll go straight through and damage all the uh, components inside. So I wanted to prevent that from happening. And so I bought uh, a skid plate and it's not just for the snow for next season so I can plow snow out of the way, but it's more for daily driving. There's a bunch of things that you can run over on the freeway and hopefully something like this will prevent any damage from happening. Let's go ahead and take off the plastic. Uh, remove the under tray on this car and get this one installed. I don't think it comes with any instructions, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Just comes with a couple bolts here, push clips, and uh, comes in two separate pieces. So the cool part about this is it comes with the access to the oil drain plug, so it'll make oil changes easier and you don't have to take off the entire plate to be able to change your oil. So that's always nice and it comes with its own door right here. First thing we're gonna do is to go ahead and remove the plastic under tray. Should be pretty simple. I don't expect this install to take a long time, but we'll just have to see. So in the snow, I noticed that I managed to rip off my heat wrap on the J pipe down there. So I'm gonna have to actually get that taken care of first or otherwise it's just gonna keep dangling. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm gonna try to get the best angle here possible, but it's a little hard with it being under the car. So, so what we wanna do is to actually get this entire piece off of the car. And so it's this entire piece, that's one big piece that goes all the way to the front along the front of the car that we wanna remove. And so it's kind of a U shape if you guys can see it. But yeah, so we just wanna get a simple prying tool or a flathead screwdriver and just take off each clip until this piece comes off. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, we'll move on to the next step. So just a little side-by-side -side comparison. So the first thing I'd like to point out is that you will be losing the side pieces that go all the way up. So for the WRXs at least, you don't get the side pieces anymore that go um, up and into the wheel well right here, but that's not a big deal. Rather sacrifice that for a little extra protection in the front. And the next thing that we want to do is to remove this piece right here that are hooked onto these two arms. So there's one arm and the other one is right here. This entire tray right here has to come off and uh, we need to take off four bolts right here. One, two for the first arm and then three, four, for the second arm, which is right here. Um, I'll give you guys the size of this in just a second. But before that, we need to take off my heat wrap that I lost. All right, so these four bolts that I mentioned earlier are actually 13 by 16. There's gonna be four of these. So next step would be to remove those. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I finally got the stock skid plate off. And um, as mentioned, these were held by these bolts right here. And they're actually held up by these nuts right here. Once you get these loosened up, you're able to remove the entire thing uh, just by grabbing onto these ones right here. So super easy. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and get these removed. And again, these are just 12 millimeter bolts. All right, so slight change of plan. Um, I ended up removing these two bars. Um, I figure it'd be a lot easier if I showed you guys how to install this with these two bars off. So in the beginning, we removed two bolts. And in order to get it completely off, there was another 12 millimeter bolt holding it. Um, at the end right here. So once you remove those two 12 millimeter bolts uh, from each side, you have free access to uh, the bars. So let's go ahead and actually move forward with the next step. So I didn't end up putting this piece on first. Instead, what I did was I married this front piece into the back piece and I'm gonna put it together on the car as a whole. Now, 
this is where it gets a little tricky so I'm gonna try to do my best to explain but you're gonna need these clips right here and this uh, 10 millimeter bolt and what you're basically gonna do is you take that front piece and you simply lay it over the back piece like so and the clip at least how I did it I basically just stuck them together and then I stuck the 10 millimeter bolt right through. It took a little while, but um, I got it figured out. So again, just remember the front piece overlays the back piece, and then you just need one clip on each side, like so. Next up is, uh, so I flipped it around. This is the bottom of the skid plate on the, uh, or this is actually the underside of the skid plate, the top part of it. And what you're gonna wanna do next is to put the bars on top right here and fasten them using these nuts and bolts that we removed in the earlier steps. I did notice one thing, it came with six clips and six bolts, but I honestly think we're only gonna be using two of them on the corners. I can't find anywhere else where these will go. So for now, we're gonna set them aside. I think they might be uh, just extras uh, for the kit. Not too sure, but for now, let's go ahead and get this uh, all buttoned down. So I got this all tightened down. I torqued these down to around 80 foot pounds. I don't think it needs to be that tight, but I figure you wanna make it tight just so it doesn't fall off uh, or anything like that. Yeah, so around 80 foot pounds for these four bolts. All right, so I take back what I said about having four extra clips. Um, I actually figured out where they should go. So I'm gonna try to show you guys exactly how this should be. So I put the skid plate here. So you'll notice one, two, three, four holes in the front. And if we look under here, I'll show you exactly where I put them. One on this tab, the second one here, third one here, and then the last one on this tab. And basically what that does is it creates a threaded location for these bolts to hold up the um, front side of the skid plate. Again, so here's one, two, you skip this tab, three, and then the last one, which is right here. So hopefully that's not too confusing. I don't know, it's it's a little weird. Um, their instructions online were for the 2014 WRXs, but these ones might be the extra ones, honestly, the push clips. So we'll just have to see, but I think I like the way this is right now. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, get it screwed on there. show you how easy it is to access your oil drain plug so if you guys can see this right here see all you have to do is remove this bolt it'll give you access to the oil drain plug which is right there so it's super easy to put it back you simply want to just slide it in place get the 10 millimeter bolt and just bolt it back up And I can imagine people um, wondering if a front lip would still work with this skid plate. And I think the answer is yes. So this is my front lip that I recently um, hit a piece of ice with. I coated it with some matte black uh, material, um, but not the point. The point is that it'll work with the skid plate. All you have to do is remove these two screws and screw it on there like so. It's a little hard to see, but yes, I can confirm that this skid plate works with a front lip. And this is the Basin R V Limited front lip. So the only thing that's affected are these two 
connections right here. All you have to do is take it out and then screw it back in. So, and the rest, you can see the holes uh, right here. So like I mentioned, I had um, two different front lips. That's why there's so many holes under here, but yeah, this should work. All right, so that basically completes the install and it doesn't look too bad. It's just a little hard just because there's no instructions, but if you guys are wondering, this is what you will be left with. Bunch of extra clips and four of these actually came from the kit, so. But these are, uh, the rest of it I pulled um, from the stock under tray. So here's what it looks like. Yeah, so it looks pretty good and solid too. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.